Even though we've been full-timing for nearly 15 years, we still continue to learn new things about RVing. We think the most valuable tool we keep on board is an open mind. As part of our annual maintenance, we flush our water heater and replace the anode rod every year. But it was just last year that we added a new item to our toolbox, a boroscope. If you haven't yet seen our video showing how we put this cool piece of gear to use, we'll put a link to it down below in the video description. The boroscope allowed us to see, for the first time, exactly how badly cleaning was needed and how ineffective the flush wand was by itself. We were also able to confirm how well our vinegar flush technique worked, removing debris and lime scale to help the heater operate more efficiently and prolong its useful life. Now with that knowledge as a baseline, we're going back in to reinspect the tank after exactly one year of full-time use. What we don't yet know is that we're in for a little surprise. We're all set for our usual flushing and cleaning procedure with everything we need to get the job done. We won't cover the steps again here, but if you'd like to see a detailed tutorial, you can check out last year's video. The one change we're making this time, based on last year's experience, is upping the amount of vinegar we're using from 20 liters to 30 liters. That's an increase from about five and a quarter gallons to about eight gallons. Because we still had some lime scale left after 16 hours in a 45% vinegar solution last year, we're upping the concentration to 66% this time to see if we can dissolve it all. That's eight gallons of vinegar for our 12 gallon water heater. First, let's get the tank opened up so we can do an initial boroscope inspection to see what effect one year's use has had on the condition of the tank. As usual, we turned the heater off the night before so the water would cool down before we drain it. We start by turning off the city water and the water pump, then opening the overpressure relief valve. Then we'll remove the anode rod and let the tank drain. One thing we noticed right away is that our anode rod had decayed less than usual, with about 75% or more of the original material still intact. So let's get inside there and have a look. You can see that we've taped our floppy boroscope to a wire hanger so we can aim it around inside the tank. Well, this is a big surprise. It looks almost exactly the same as it did when we finished cleaning it one year ago. There's very little debris on the bottom of the tank. And here's the live audio of our surprise response when we aimed the boroscope up at the heating element and got our first look at it. Oh my god. Look how spectacular that is. We don't even need to do it. We're going to save that vinegar for next year. Yeah. We can't believe it. It's as clean as a whistle. As you heard, we immediately realized that we don't even need to do our tank treatment and can save the vinegar for next year. We're going to go ahead and flush the heater with the wand anyway, since it's open and it only takes a minute. This usually washes out a fair amount of debris, but this time there's almost nothing in there to come out. With these two back-to-back -back internal inspections, it's the first time we've had concrete visible evidence of the dramatic effect that water quality can have on water heater condition. The reason the tank is in such great shape this year is due to our route of travel. Unlike most years, when we spend long periods using the high mineral content water in the desert southwest, we were only there for a very brief period last winter. We spent almost the entire year in the Pacific Northwest and British Columbia, in places where the water quality is excellent. We'll look forward to next time, when our third consecutive boroscope inspection will be after we've spent some more time in the desert again. We'll save the vinegar for that, since we're sure we'll need it then. With this inspection complete, we're just going to close up the tank and carry on. While we usually replace the anode rod every year whether it needs it or not, we're going to reinstall this one. There's still more than enough material left to protect our tank for another year. We'd still recommend annual inspections, but this was one of those rare times when a maintenance surprise was a good one. Usually, it goes the other way.